Okay, B'Shem Hashem, Nasem and Hatziach. We want to talk about the Parsha. Usually we do the Ramban. We may do a Ramban, but since Rav Chaim Kanyanevsky's son-in-law was in town and he spoke beautifully. Rav Rubashkin. Right. Uh, Rav Kodelsky. So we want to talk about the Pasuk that Elijah just read about how it says in the beginning of the Parsha that Yosef would speak Lashon Hara. If we look in the beginning of the parasha, it says, "Vehum mevidi batan ra el avihen." Something that seems so minute is very, very fundamental and monumentally important. It says that um, he would uh, what he would say three types of lashon. What were the three ch- lashon haras he would say about his brothers? Does anybody know? Ra- let's read Rashi. So we're in the beginning of the parasha. Second Pasuk says that he was a youngster. He was acting silly, like a Na'ar, and he would bring gossip, bad reports about his brothers to his father. So what, what Lashon Hara did Yosef say to Yaakov about his brothers? Do you know? mesaper. <laughs> So he says there's three Lashon Haras he used to say Rashi brings. If you look at Rashi, I don't know if you have Rashi. Yes, yes, we do. Shaya Ochlim Evem and I say there, you know, the Goyim, seven, they go to heaven. Goyim are not allowed to do animal abuse. So what do they have to do? If they want to eat an animal, devour an animal, they can't devour it alive. They can't rip off a limb of a live animal. So you would say the brothers... <coughs> we're, we're guilty of that. Then he would say, Leah's children would call the their brothers from the secondary maidservant wives of Yaakov, Zilpah and, Zil, Bila and Zilpah. They would, he would say, oh, you know, your children from Leah call mm-hmm. their brothers from the, uh, they treat them like secondary citizens and they call them avadim, yeah. servants. And then he said a third type of Lashon Hari Yosef. What was that? He said they were committing sexual sin. And then Rashi brings that uh, that's why he got punished, measure for measure. The whole parsha the Chafetz Chaim explains is this amazing, amazing tapestry, beautiful rug of everything from A to Z in the parsha is about midah keneged midah, measure for measure. Since Yosef said they ate Aver Minachai, ripped off Animal. A limb from a live animal. What happened? Yosef got punished. He said he was eaten by. Yeah, they dipped his thing in blood. It says, Rashi says, Right? When they told Yaakov that your son was devoured and ripped off by a wild animal, what did they do with his coat of many colors? They dipped it in goat's blood. They dipped it in goat's blood. The, the reason, when he called his brothers um, servants, he got sold as a servant himself. And from the fact that uh, he said that he was um, his brothers did sexual sin, who came and was constantly antagonizing him? Zolecha, his master's... Zolecha. So he says that the Chavetz Chaim says that, like we said, nothing in our life is random. It's very important to know. Sometimes people go off the derech and they lose their emunah because they think God is not fair and why do I need to suffer? Mm-hmm. But we know that everything God is our shadow. It says in the Zohar, like it says in Shilam Alot Hashem Silecha. So it's like a boomerang. Anything you do comes back to you. You understand? So why does it say that God enjoys it when we argue with Him? Yeah, that's not bad. That's we. That's 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 something else. This is something no, else. You're saying we're we're, when we everything mida can I get mida, but then you know there are other. No, places. arguing, arguing with Him is something else. Arguing is uh, if we say God's not fair, that's against the whole philosophy that you believe in, Rab Nachman. That's complaining. I don't know. Uh, but you have to uh, say thank you, Hashem, for. Kind said uh, would argue with him, and he was successful. No, that's a, that was a type of. I don't know. 
There's nothing arguing. Arguing is in it. No, he presented and, uh, his was, prayers in the, in yeah, the form of he's, an he was, he was saying it's too hard to handle. He, won't repent. he was repenting. Yeah. Not challenging God that no, you're not no, fair. No. no, but he said you uh, no, no. have mercy. I want to tell you, you should know, the Ramchal brings in a sefer, Klach Pitre Chochma, uh -huh. he, and the Ben Ishchai also brings down in his Kabbalistic working, yeah. that it's one of the most fundamental, th that's why every Jew needs to know Kabbalah, it's very important to know the idea of Gilgul. Mm. Reincarnation, you know why? Why is it so important to know? What, what? He says it's very, very important to know. You know why? Because the Zohar introduces us to this idea. It says, like the Zohar says, the whole reason that uh, Eov, Job, had to mm -hmm. become Badbach, or Bichareo, become suffer, suffer like unendingly was because he was a Gilgul of Avram's father, Terach. I heard it was because it was a test for him, and if he passed, he would have been one of the forefathers. Yeah, I mean, that's one Midrash, but the, the, the deepest understanding of the Torah, which is the Zohar, says that, see, basically, it's not a good, if we're the children of Hashem, and you think your father in heaven is not fair, then how are you going to be love him? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and fear him, and have a relationship. So, the reason why it's important to know Mida Keneged Mida is, as must kebar must, which means uh, it says there's a pasuk in Eicha we read on the night of Tisha B'av. It says from God's mouth the good and bad doesn't come. Mm -hmm. We create our own destiny from our own actions. Now, that could be in this lifetime, mm -hmm. or it could be what next lifetime. No, a previous lifetime. Mm -hmm. So that no no the the, the, the um, I know for a fact. That many people, many Sadiqim were able to, people that were unconsolable. I don't want to get into those stories now because I really want to go through this Chafetz Chaim, but in Shemir Salashram, by the way, this class is based on uh, volume two of Shemir Salashram of Chafetz Chaim, chapter uh, kind of 11, 12, and it's called Parashat Vayeshev. But the, the idea is God is fair. Now, many different ways of why God is fair. Either you did something wrong in this lifetime or in a previous lifetime. No, can it also be so... But hasur tamim pa'olo, like we say in Parashat Azinu. Yeah. God is a perfect rock. Ki kol derachav mishpat. Everything he does is perfect mercy and judges. Sadiq ve'yasharhu. He's righteous and straight. But then it also says he could be doing it to increase the person's reward. Yeah, right? that's for... No, no, that's for like a sadiq gamur. Or he could be punishing the uh, per, uh, person for the sins of the city. Yeah, we're, we're, that's going into branching out. The main thing for n normal Joe Shmuel person, between you and your creator, between uh, you and your, you're a child of Hashem, right? Uh -huh. You have to realize, we don't want to get into, you're getting too advanced. You're putting the horse in front of the, uh -huh. <laughs> you understand? All right. We want to talk between you and Hashem. Uh-huh. That, 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 that's why we wanted to talk about this. He says, we know that, the, basically, Chafetz Chaim wrote his whole book to say that the father of all sin is Lashon Hara, right? Mm -hmm. So he wants to say that the whole Galut, you understand? Mm -hmm. The whole exile of, of Egypt came about why? Yeah. No, because Lashon what happened is... Lord, you, you, the brothers were jealous of Yosef, and Yosef said Lashon about them. And because of this Lashon Har, they hated him more. They sold him. Uh -huh. So it created the whole um, tragic history. So he says that, um, so we explained the Rashi, that First of all, you have to understand the Chavetz Chaim wants to go deeper into this um, Rashi that we just explained. And says, you should know, Yosef didn't go advertise this to the whole world. Who would he tell, say the Lashon Hara to? Yaakov, which was an authority figure. So the question is, why was he punished exactly? What are you supposed to do? If you see your brother going off the derech, uh -huh. why would you not go tell your father? I mean, Yosef was not trying to bring a, a, a tattletale. You understand? 
Maybe. So it says that. Um, so we said exactly that. We, we explained from Rashi that it was Mida Keneged Mida. Whatever he did, he got paid uh-huh. much worse. Like he spoke about his 10 brothers, he got 10 years of Please. prison. Mm-hmm. That he. Because um, he, he said that the brothers called their other brothers Evid, so he, was, he became an actual uh-huh. servant, Evid, for, in a dungeon for 10 years, and then he got another two years because he had a lack of Bitachon. Mm-hmm. So it says. It says very clearly here that Yosef, Yaakov loved, which was his favorite child? Yosef. Yosef. It says, Oh, wow, so beautiful. You should know, parenthetically, here's, this is something I never looked into. My dear Kohanim brethren, did Yaakov actually accept because, you know, there's one thing of saying Lashonara, then we, that actually mm-hmm. hear the poison, mm-hmm. are we allowed to accept it? No. What do you mean? Okay, so let's say business has bad Yelp reviews. We can't accept those bad Yelp reviews? No, you have to go do your own research. So, what do you mean? You could be choshish. You can't believe it as a fact. Why not? If a hundred people are saying this place has bad food... If he's a can't. Jew, maybe they're anti semite You never know. Maybe they had it out for him. He's their comp- Maybe they're the competition of this guy. I'm saying you could use your common sense. Obviously, yeah. We're not saying. But it says, the Chavetz Chaim says something very interesting, very heartwarming. It says, actually, Yaakov did not accept the Lashon Har of the brothers. Did you know that? Uh-huh. So even though Yosef's Lashon Har really had no effect, because it says, it's not because you, the Torah is saying Yosef didn't become Yaakov's favorite because he put them down. Uh-huh. He was favorite because it was Raquel's. And he was the youngest. And young. Just that's a natural yeah. thing that they, the, yeah. the youngest kid. But, so he's saying, don't think that Yaakov accepted the Lashon Hara, which is an important thing. Mm-hmm. And Yaakov made a mistake by making a favorite. Yeah, yeah, that he made a mistake. That we learned that Gemara and Shabbat says you should never make yeah. uh, one child make favorite. jealous. Right. So it says that Yosef had a, uh, a dream that he was the king, right? And that made the brothers antagonize the brothers. Um, it says, we have to understand, the Chafetz Chaim really wants to go deep into this whole episode. Why did the brothers have such a deep hatred that they even wanted to murder Yosef, right? And make him, get rid of him. Mm-hmm. Mafia style, right? They wanted to take him out. They thought maybe he's like Esau. Exactly. Because they thought that Yosef wants to be the king and that's why by him saying Lashon Hara, Yaakov would accept that Yosef is a superior child and they would have to act as, as servants <laughs> But he says that's why he, this is his. They were paranoid. They were thinking Yosef, by always giving us a bad report, by giving us a bad reputation, what's going to happen to us? We're going to be yeah. treated like Yaakov's going to say, Yosef has all the money. Yosef is your king, and you guys. Yeah. And they saw. They already saw that he is making him a yeah. royal robe, yeah. and we don't have the robe. So, so now he's all the time he's trying to say it's not fair. You have to understand who are these people that wanted to kill Yosef? Levi, the father of all the ancestor of all the Kohanim. Mm-hmm. Yehuda. Uh-huh. Shimon and Levi. Yeah. yeah. I mean they all co conspired. Yeah. So uh-huh. we have to be done the right, we have to f- judge favorably. All the time is just trying to say what was going on. In their minds, in their minds, they thought, and you know, Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky, the Mafarsham also say that either, like you were saying, it may get to a point that Yaakov, only Yosef becomes the true successor of Yaakov, and all the other Shvatim go off to Derek, not a part of the whole picture, yeah. and are like Esav and Ishmael, mm-hmm. or 
like the Chavetz Chaim saying here, that they're just going to be second class citizens in front of Yosef, and they already had some proof to that pudding, which was mm-hmm. Yosef has superior clothes. Yeah. They didn't have that. And it says, um, we know already that Yitzchak had predicted that Yaakov would be a Gevir. It says, have a Gevir Lachicha, and now Yosef is getting special treatment. So mm-hmm. it was a little bit on the, uh, you know, dangerous side. They were getting a little bit, you know, worried about it. But, okay, so now let's proceed with the story. You just read that um, they basically threw him into the pit. Mm-hmm. Now, halachically, why were they doing that? So the Chavetz Chaim, again, something very important, the altar of Slobodka says, actually, is that um, if we read the Torah like a two-year-old and think like Shimon and Levi are some mass Islamic murderers, and they're like an ancient version of Muhammad, chas v'shalom. These people, Yaakov had mitato shalema, right? Mm-hmm. These are the na- All of Yaakov's children are... Righteous. Right, righteous. So, it says, bottom line, throwing Yosef in the pit was, was an act of murder. So he actually brings that, first of all, the Gemara says, uh, it says in part of Shad Mishpatim, don't say Lashon Hara, then it says the mitzvah of throwing meat. You know, if you don't, good do, if you don't do a proper Shechita, who, who gets the meat? If it's Nevela? The dogs. The dogs. So the Gemara learns there that, why does it say don't say, because it says whoever says Lashon Hara, you should feed him to the yeah. dogs. Yeah. So again, the Chavetz Chaim is just trying to bring out that what was going, unfortunately, in the mind of the brothers, their paranoia was that we don't know how powerful Yosef is, what Yosef is going to do to us by his Lashon Hara. Mm-hmm. Because listen, as we always talk about Navi, we love Tanakh, all of us, the whole city of Kohanim died because of the Lashon Hara. So the brothers were too, truly fearful that, you know, Yaakov may come just like... He, Listen, by his curse of Rachel, Rachel died young. Mm-hmm. So if Yaakov is accepting the Lashon Hara that Yosef is saying, he may curse them and they may die young. So they thought that if we throw Yosef into the pit, it's true that passively he may die. Like we know our friend, unfortunately, was trying to passively uh, leave the world. But it's not, halachic, halachically it may not be considered direct murder. You understand? Which means if they were brought to Bet Din. They had Bet Din at the time? Yeah, I mean, Yaakov had a Bet Din. They had Yeshiva, Shem Vayever. Who was in that Yeshiva? Many people. People that wanted to see the truth. They just weren't. There were like, Yahudim? Well, no, that's another machlok. Uh, what, what was the din of those people? But Yaakov Avinu learned in that Yeshiva for 14 so years. They were monotheistic? They were, they were, of course. The peop- How many people were in that Yeshiva? I don't know. That's a good question. I feel like Yaakov was probably like the only student and it was... No, like, no, 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 like, no. Like, uh, no, no. No, you he have to... He was convicted by who? Exactly. By the rapist. No, no, no. This is Tomar. Yehuda had a yeshiva. Burned. He had a, he had a tribunal. Yeah. No, no, no. The yeshiva of Shemba ever. Uh, who was the... There was only Yaakov over there. There were no other people. No, no. Let's not get off topic. But I believe in the yeshiva of Shemba ever there were people. But what the Chavetz Chaim is trying to say is sometimes in God's eyes you're a murderer but in the local Betin mm-hmm. like if you learn the Gemara Sanhedrin you will not be able to be prosecuted as a murderer. So the Shevatim said it's true that he may end up dying in the pit, mm-hmm. but at least we're not directly putting a bullet through his head or chopping off his head. And that's what they, uh, the rationale was, that it's kind of like a passive, mm-hmm. not a yeah, direct yeah, murder. Yeah, yeah. Whatever happens, happens. I mean, but the thing that I want to let you know is that um, you, you, we, we're going to read that in Pasuk 25, we see that the Malach Gavriel was the one that said he's in Daytona. Yeah. Right? And um, they sold Yosef, and after that, they sat to eat. 
No, they threw him in the pit and they sat to eat. Yeah, they threw him in the pit and they sat to eat. So this... Did they give him any food? No. <laughs> Well, no food. And he was crying out to them. So this is also another mida uh, keneged mida. So the whole parsha we saw, Yosef said three things. Throughout the parsha, he got punished three ways, measure for measure, because mm-hmm. it's type of a spiritual karma. So it says that the Chavetz Chaim says this was a very rude thing to do. After you're basically passively killing your brother, mm-hmm. now they had reasons to do it because they were worried that. You know, Yosef may... They're, they're kind of coming from this mindset that it's either us or him. Either he's going to become Klal Yisrael because he's trying to kick us out and push us out like Yishmal and Esav were pushed out. Mm-hmm. But he says, Ki afilu la'avon yoter gadol shechavim ita'alav mikol makom sa'ananat adin sh'otah layla ayu mechuyavim d'tponu b'etzim adin v'lo yinav sh'ayin. He says that... He says that... Um, he says that the, there's a halacha that if 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 a Sanhedrin mm-hmm. gives a verdict of a death penalty, which they were like a betin of, uh, yeah. it's something called halana, halanat adin. He says that night they shouldn't eat. You know, mm-hmm. first of all, when judges are giving their thing of a death penalty, they're fasting, yeah, and not they only are. that, yeah. That's a uh, yeah. We should learn a little bit Sanhedrin. It's the a very guy, juicy. The judge from Kal Rittenhouse, he wasn't fasting. <laughs> he wasn't the Sanhedrin. He's he was a, a guy. Doesn't matter. Don't mix up apples in it. He was a good judge. You like But it, sa- it says that it says that the bottom line is that they should have audited their which means think about it like this. You basically murdered your brother. Now whether it was in you didn't put a bullet through his head, you didn't chop off his head, but you threw him into a um, a pit. A pit. And I heard a beautiful thing from a big, very big Sadiq in Mansi. It says, Why did Yosef deserve, again, this is such a glorious shot. Why did deserve, Yosef deserve to be thrown into a pit full of snakes? Because the Gemara Tanit, Dafyomi, we're going to get to it right now. It says, yes. When Mashiach comes, all the animals are going to come to the snake mm-hmm. and say, When the uh, coyote or the leopard or the lion rip apart an animal they eat it mm-hmm. but it says that a cobra it, a lot of times they, they the the um they eat it alive no they they sting you a rattlesnake but it doesn't eat the thing the pe- person so wh- why 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 you just swallow but you know some of did you it. see that video on national yeah. Geographic? no no but, but where that guy puts himself in that like titanium. yeah yeah but but, but yeah. Okay. Elijah, but it says it says like this. So he says, "Why am I different mm-hmm. than um, than a person that uh, says lashonara? What does he gain? Do you gain sexual pleasure? Do you gain money? Right? When you when you say lashonara, what do you do? So it could be that's the pshat. Yosef said lashonara. What was his punishment? He was thrown into a pit because really this, the Chavetz Chaim brings from the Zohar that who was the first person that ever said lashonara? The snake, because he said Lashon Hara about Hashem. Yeah. Do you know? The, it's a beautiful Zohar that the Chavetz Chaim brings that the first sin was not eating from the uh, forbidden fig or whatever, grape, the Ramchal, member we learned? It was a it grape. Was Adam adding to the Torah, by he's saying... No, the but the, the, this is a different perspective. He's saying the first sin was that Chava in her mind, God said Lashon the Satan said Lashon Hara about who? Hashem. Mm-hmm. And then who accepted that Lashon Hara? Chava and Adam. Because they said, why did Hashem... He said, Hashem had ulterior motives for telling you not to eat from the... But Adam said it. He, he said he added to the Torah. That's, uh, that's Yeah, that's uh, another mistake. That's another mistake. There was many... That's different... before the snake happened. Yeah, but okay. That, that, I'm not arguing. Obviously, the Rav Nassim brings that. <laughs> but but this, is, this is another thing that... Saying... The... the Exactly. When they, Lashon Hara is synonymous with a snake. With snake, the with snake. With snake. And that's why, again, this idea... That was the idea of... Um, of uh, why he was uh, thrown into the... Um, the snake pit. You know? Because... It wasn't a snake pit. It was just a pit. A snake pit is very small. I don't think he'd fit... 
No, but it was says it says there was no water there. It was full of scorpions, scorpions, and um, so they dug a pit and they threw them in there. No, 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 like no, a no. snake pit. No, no, no. It was an existing pit. It was an existing pit. It was an existing pit. God. So it said it said that later on, you don't make a feast after you shouldn't have a stomach to eat if you threw your own brother. Yeah. In the thing to die, right? Mm-hmm. So it says later on the, the, the tribes got punished measure for measure. You know why? Because they feasted. Because when they came into Asiyos to feast, the feast turned sour because he said, You stole my cup, right? Did Reuven also eat with them? No, he wasn't eating with them. Uh-huh. Reuven had gone to serve Yaakov. Okay, so in Pasuk 32 we read again, the Chavetz Chaim says a beautiful idea about Mida Keneged Mida regarding Yehuda. Yehuda, in a way, did a favor to Yosef because he caused Reuven and Sh- I'm sorry, Reuven saved Yosef, right? Mm-hmm. He said, throw him in a pit, don't kill him. Shimon and Levi wanted to kill him. But now what happened was uh, yeah, Yehuda saved, saved him because he could have yeah. potentially died in the, yeah. in the pit that was full of scorpions and snakes. And he, what, what ended up, he said they sold him. So, how much did they sell him for? 20 pieces of silver. 20 pieces of silver. So each brother got two, two shekels, basically. Two pieces of silver. Which was how much value back then? It was Not too much, five, it's petting. It was five uh, shekels of sanctuary. Right. And that they do pidyon. Yeah, that's what they do pidyon for. Exactly. So it says Yehuda also did a big sin here. Because you, but when Yehuda took Yosef's golden coat of many colors, right? Ketonet Pasim and dipped it in the blood. Mm-hmm. He caused Yaakov how many years of pain? Mm-hmm. Yaakov Avinu was... Um, uh, mourning yeah. for 20 years, I think, no? Let's see. No. Well, Yosef was 12 years yeah, in the 12 prison. And seven. And, uh, yeah, t- 20. So 20, 20 years. Yeah. Then Yaakov ripped his garments, right? Mm-hmm. And he was crying. He was depressed. So the Chavetz Chaim says, again, the concept of Midah Keneged Midah comes in. You know why the Midrash says? Mm-hmm. Because since Yosef, he caused the heartache, depression to Yaakov. Hashem said, you caused your father to cry for 20 years and think that his son is dead. Mm-hmm. What happened to Yehuda? His wife died right now, right after this. So he had to, whenever somebody passes away in Judaism, right? You have to do what? What's the sign of mourning? Ripping clothes. Ripping clothes. And two of his sons died. Oh, yeah. So it says, and Mida can I get Mida? When he said, Hakerna, he said, who's, who's ripped up bloody clothing is this? Yaakov. So what did Yaakov said? Yehuda said. Yaakov said to Yehuda, he responded, this is Yosef. What did Tamar say to Yaakov? Exact? exact. Jacob, you're not here, you're going to like this though. Because uh, me and exact. Mr. Zarabi were... What did were, he say? What did um, Tamar say? So Tamar said those exact words. He says, who is this? Because you know when they, oh, she yeah, acted yeah, like yeah. a harlot, yeah, a it. prostitute, she said, Le- yeah, got it, got it. and that was very embarrassing. Yeah. Imagine you're... Yehuda, even from the... You have to understand that it's not for nothing that the kings all have to come from Yehuda because Yehuda had a tremendous amount of integrity. Which means if Levi, like the Maharal says, why is Levi the father of all the Kwanim? Because Levi is something that connects. Yelave mm-hmm. Ishti. You understand? So the part, the, the 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 concept of Kohanim and Levim is to connect the Jews to their father, mm-hmm. yeah. to be that conduit. Because once Leah had Levi, she said, "Now my husband is gonna always be be with me." Be with me. Now, by the same thing, what happened here is Yehuda. I mean, Tamar had tremendous integrity, and she was a hero. She didn't say you were the one that slept with me, so I don't deserve to. Mm-hmm. She said, Hakerna. Hakerna. But Ye- Yehuda himself became to. Be- he knew between him and in his own conscience mm-hmm. that he was. He did a very big 
I mean, Mashiach comes out of that and parents, yeah, but yeah. Yehuda was tremendously embarrassed by his own actions. Why did he deserve that to happen to him? Because he said, Haker na, mm -hmm. to who? I mean, the Chavetz Chaim says, Umi yochol godol You, that you're the most prominent of Yaakov's children. Yehuda was always the leader. And you go and do such a thing, then you go sleep with a prostitute? Mm -hmm. So the reason why he deserved this test and he failed the test, which in a way, a good, good light of Mashiach came out of this, but we're, we're leaning on the most basic level, the reason why this happened, he got, you know, in the end of the day, the whole world knows that Yehuda did sleep with a, prostitute that happened to be his own daughter-in-law. I mean, he didn't know it was his daughter-in-law, but the reason why I mean, I'm sure Yehuda was very embarrassed to admit it. Oh, yeah. Why did he deserve that punishment? Mida connected Mida, because he caused Yaakov to be become red mm -hmm. and depressed for 20 oh, years oh, yeah. when he said Haker na. So that's why we're trying to bring the, all these different ideas like it's, again, Mida connected Mida it's the Parsha really, yeah. the poster yeah. child of Mida connected Mida. Okay, proceed. And I just want to add something that Rav Chaim doesn't say but Rav Chaim Kanyanevsky Shlita's son-in-law said, the great Rosh Hashiva Rav Kalensky said, he said that also in next week's Parsha Miket it says Vayetzer Libam when Yosef accused them of thievery of stealing his goblet it says it's the only time you see in all of Torah mm -hmm. and I think Tanakh he said also that somebody almost had a heart attack it says by Yetzel Libam their heart why? again Mida can I get Mida because when they told Yaakov that Yosef is dead what happened to Yaakov? Yeah, depressed I mean he almost had a heart attack yeah I mean, because the, the, Kabbalistically, you know why Yaakov was unconsolable. He had depression. No, but why? Why? That's because that's Yosef that's is Midat Yesod, which means Sadiq Yesod Olam. The Sadiq is the foundation. Yosef is the sixth sphera. If there's no foundation, without Yosef, we, the, Klal Yisrael has no foundation. You could have beautiful jewels on a crown, but if you don't have the metal... Yeah. The pillar holding up the whole house. So, but you again, you see this idea of midah can get midah. So, so go ahead, proceed. I fast forward to chapter thirty-nine, the episode of Yosef and Zolecha, that he was asked, trying to be enticed and seduced to do adultery with his master's wife, the Chavetz Chaim says again, why did Yosef deserve such a terrible sin? Mm -hmm. well, a test. It was a difficult test. You know, because somebody that is uh, abandoned, stabbed in the back by his own brothers and has no father or mother to take care of him is looking for love. Mm -hmm. We were just learning that in the Mesat Yesharim, actually. That one of the most basic needs is having social interaction and friends. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people want to be respected. So it says that if you look in Pasuk 6 that you just read, Elijah, mm -hmm. it says that um, we know one of the sins we met, mentioned in the beginning of the class was that Yosef called his brothers to said Lashonar, that his brothers are calling each other Evid, right? He was saying Lashonar mm -hmm. about his brothers. So it says that it says here that Yosef was very good looking. Mm -hmm. Very handsome and good looking. Wow. So it says that um, Rashi brings, what does it mean he was good looking? He says Yosef was obsessed with his looks and would go in the mirror and like brush his hair and really? comb it and, oh. and like that. So Hashem said, this was Midah Keneged Midah, it was Pashan Why? Again, we see this idea of Midah Keneged Midah. Why? Because Yosef, your father it's is. More. He's mourning. He's unconsolable, right? Yaakov was literally mm -hmm. unconsolable. He was depressed for how many years? Mm -hmm. Two decades, 20 years. And you're going and thinking you're going to be the next model on GQ, just playing with your hair and stuff. Hashem said, I'm going to send the bear, the dove after you. Hareni, megarcha bechata dov. So he says again, mida can I get mida? You were being becoming obsessed and not caring that your dad is mourning over you is um did he have a girlfriend at this time no no has to show them yourself is sadiq in 10 years so okay. so it says yeah. 
He says, he says, and this caused them ultimately to be in prison for, for 12 years. So again, the Chavetz Chaim, we're just going to end off the class with two beautiful ideas. It says that um, it's going to be an idea you like, of thank you, the thank you Hashem idea. Mm-hmm. It says that the bottom line is Yosef, at the end of the Parsha, it ends with the idea that he was in the jail for 10 years. Why? 12 months, the Midrash says he had to be 12 months times 10 years, right? Why? Because he had to stay a year in jail for each one of the Lashon Hara. And that's a manifestation, like we say, Kaddish for a year. Because uh-huh. from here, the Chavetz Chaim learns how terrible a sin Lashon Hara is. Mm-hmm. That just like Rishayim, Yosef was in Gehino, because the Chavetz Chaim basically is saying that the jail was a dungeon. It was a physical version of Gehino. Because if you actually look, there was no sunlight. Yeah. It's very depressing. It was like a pit. It was a pit. Again, the pit. <laughs> Yosef twice was in a pit. Mm. So y- you see that um, really the Gemara in Chulin says that um, one should judge Yos- Yosef. You know, ultimately, Chavetz Chaim says this in another place. We didn't read it inside. But you know what the problem was? This is the same reason Miriam was punished. Even though, again, Yosef did not go and publicize it on Facebook and Twitter about the Lashonara. It was to his father. And Miriam also had said Lashonara to who? Aro. Uh, uh, so it was kind of like, definitely Yosef, I, I, I gotta Yosef, Yosef was definitely trying to have his father get his brothers with the program, right? Mm-hmm. It wasn't like he was trying to trap tattle devil. It's still... We human beings, before we go and stab people in the back and Lashon Hara them and character assassination, we should talk to them. Because the Midrash says, the Rabbi Shmuel he brought, I was telling you, he said the reason why the brothers ate Abraham Minachai is because the animal was built with Sefer Yetzirah, the Zohar says. Did you know that? The Ben Kubalim say. He says, the anim- the- Yosef didn't know mm-hmm. that the brothers knew Kabbalah and the animal that they ate wasn't a real animal. It was a golem. Uh, and it's halakhically. No, no, I'm not joking. It was halakhic. What do you mean? What do you think? Yeah. They're making, Israel is making robotic meat right now. Uh, well, and, they have rabbi. these they have, all burgers, but no. they, I mean. Rabbi. It was a golem. Don't you, you don't think, uh, le, le, who no, do you I think, think is holy? Took, uh, took a goat and they killed it. What do you mean? People 500 uh, years ago, we know, were able to build yeah. golems. Uh-huh. You don't think Levi... And I think we're able to... It's book, it said that the brothers, when they would get a goat, they would cut the, the you know, the wind pipe. But this is a Kabbalistic part. Kabbalistically, this is one of the shot I heard from in a shir this week from one of the greatest rabbis in the world, Kabbalist, Rabbi Shmueli. He wow. said that they, they had created the... A golem uh, and they killed... Through it. Sefer Yetzirah. So logically, it doesn't need. It's not considered a live animal. It's considered like synthetic meat, like uh, Impossible Burger meat. <laughs> so Yosef didn't know that. Yeah. I'm saying, practically, we want to get a lot of uh, ethical lesson that we human beings have a terrible tendency, and that is we rush to judgment. Mm-hmm. But the guy's your brother. Go ask him. Hey, hey bro, Yehuda, Rabbi. why are you doing uh, shady stuff? That in my eyes, I think it's like. Arayot, right? Because yes, the, yeah. the w- reason why Zolecha, his master's wife, came yeah. after him because Yosef had accused his brothers of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or why are you guys mm. eating live animals yeah, without yeah. killing them first? They would have told him it's not an animal, it's a synthetic mm-hmm. animal because it was created through mm-hmm. Sefer Yetzirah. Mm-hmm. Or why are you guys calling it yeah. each other uh, Avadim? And then Yosef would have told them. They would have. Were, that's the same problem with Miriam. The Chavetz Chaim says, "Before you go to Aaron, he's your brother. You're his older sister. You're like a mother. You could say, hey, yeah. Moshe, why did you divorce Sipora?'" And then Moshe would have told. We need to let people yeah. defend. We need to communicate with each other instead yeah. of going and uh, accru- and ruining their reputation. And Shem is very sensitive on this, and and that was the fundamental mistake they made. But I just want to end up that. On a, on a positive note, because uh, both of us love Rabbi Nachman's Torah, and it said that um, according to Kabbalah, and, and um, it said 
that even though Yosef was thrown in the pit twice mm-hmm. and stabbed by his brothers twice in the back. Why? Because once they said, we'll throw them in the pit, they didn't have remorse. They took him out of the pit and then sold him. Yeah. That's two different. And then he was in, in, in uh, 12 years in prison. But he says, Yosef, uh, it says, he says, Rabbi Kalinsky said the. Kolinsky said this. He says, Rav Chaim's son-in-law said an amazing thing. He said, it's brought down that um, Yosef, what was he doing day and night when he was in the dungeon? Praying. He said, he was saying modani. He was saying nishmat kochai. Uh, he was saying... I thought that was composed by Peter. No, 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 no. I think there's some opinions that... No, no, that. that's, you're mis- mixing that up with uh, Yigdal. No, no, nishmat. No, no. It says that he was saying... He was saying he was saying, Moida Hashem Lefanecha, that you picked Avram, Yisab, and Yaakov, and you made me. Because I was saying, like in the beginning of the cast, Yosef, in a certain way, is like the fourth father. Right? We have four I mothers, four matriarchs. No. Job, they say he no, was Yosef, he, he felt his test, though. Okay. It says that he said the same way you picked Avram, Yisab, and Yaakov to be. The chariot for your shechina. Also, I thank you, Hashem, for everything you do. Because he says Yosef could, thought to himself, all the shvatim they were in the Gan Eden, around Yaakov. They were learning Torah with him. Because yeah, yeah. Yaakov always used to learn with Yosef more. But now that Yosef wasn't around, he was obviously teaching mm-hmm. the Torah that he learned from Yitzchak and Avram. Mm-hmm. And Shem Vayver, he was a Jew is learned, made to be in the four walls of Bet Midrash. Working is a secondary thing. But let me just finish this idea. So he says. Y- Yosef in next week's parsha rise to a glorious. Mm-hmm. Why? Because it says Yosef thought to himself. He says, "Who is the Hashem that put me in the pit? Why Hashem put me here? Why? Because Nes means like a flag. Nisayon, test. The root word of test in Hebrew is Nes. When you w- when a person wins a marathon, they put a big flag like he's the." Yeah. A flag, it says, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So this, Yosef realized that what made Avram, Avram, the ten test. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. One made Yitzchak, Yitzchak. He said, why? It? He said, my brothers are not being tested. I'm being tested. Mm-hmm. It must be I'm destined to be as great. So look how Yosef was the master. Mm-hmm. See, nothing in life is a problem. It's just how you react to it. Yosef is the master of positive (coughs) reframing. Yosef thought to himself, my brothers are in Gan Eden. They're sitting with Yaakov Avinu and Yeshiva and Kola learning Torah the whole day. And I'm here in the dungeon. So either he had a choice to become Mm -hmm. super depressed, but instead he said Nishmat. Because he said, what made Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov so great? Well, they're they're test. What made Yitzhak, Yitzhak? The test. the test that he, he, he Akeda. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What made Yaakov Yaakov? All the hardship. All the hardship. So he said, why, why am I getting hardship and they're not getting hardship? Must be Hashem wants to make me on their level. So instead of being depressed and pulling out his thing, it says in the Midrash, he said, Nishmat. Yeah. So it said, Hashem says that um, you, 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 you had the emunah that any situation we're in, you have to know this is it can't be better than this. Because Hashem put me here. If Hashem put me, no so it one says pray for the situation to change. So it said, no, he did. No, I'm he sorry. said Nishma. No, that's you're the one that teaching the whole world. That's the whole thing of thank you, Hashem. That's the whole thing of Ravi. It says uh, say thank right, you and see right. me because but let me Hold just finish on. this. Let okay. me just finish this. So he said that um in the end of the day. Your, at, your attitude could make hell into heaven. Because Yosef was really in hell. And that's why we see that uh, Harab ben David always taught us this, that ultimately Yosef was always successful in anything he did. Mm-hmm. Wherever he went, he became the leader. Mm-hmm. Because we don't see anywhere in the Torah that Yosef complained. No. Because he knew this idea. Mm-hmm. That the... So we have to know that whoever Hashem loves, mm-hmm. same bit 
Yeah, he tests. Yeah. And that's why Avram Avinu had 10 difficult tests because Hashem in Navi, Yeshaya says, Avram o Havi, Habibola. Avram Avinu is the law. So he, Yosef, in a certain way, the Midrash says, came to the fourth, <laughs> the successor of Yaakov, because he had the most tests, and he passed this test with Emunah, just like. Mm -hmm. So the moral of the story is never always ha you always have to be, and that's what Hanukkah is. Hanukkah is saying, Hanukkah is saying that we always have to be happy. You know, we have to have a muna and never lose the faith that Hashem brought us to where we are. Amen.